Namaste. My name is Satyaish Chakravarti. I'm a freelance software developer living in India and I've been writing code for the last 17 years. I'm available for software consulting and training assignments. If you need to get in touch with me, please write to satyaish at gmail.com. Please also visit my website at satyaish.net. Today I want to talk to you about a class that helps you do indentation. Oftentimes you want to write XML files or HTML files or even source code and all of these call for some kind of an indentation or formatting. And the traditional way that you and I would go about doing this would be this. We would just include spaces wherever we wanted indentation and decrease that much number of spaces where we wanted to decrease indentation. Or we could write a class that does the same thing in a slightly better way. The good news is we don't have to. There's already a class available to do that and that's what I want to talk about today. These words don't mean anything. This is the programmer's lorem ipsum on steroids. I want to apologize if any of these words mean something offensive in your language. And the class is called Indented Text Writer and it derives from a text writer and it resides in the system.codedom.compiler namespace which you can find in system.dll. And I'm going to teach you how to use it in just the next 10 seconds. And that's all this video is about. And what this class allows you to do is take stuff that you've written like this and convert it into stuff that looks like this. You new up an object of the indented text writer and to the parameterized constructor you provide an underlying text writer. Which means this guy can write to anything that is a text writer and you know that the text writer abstracts the underlying media on which you're going to write. So you could write to a stream using a stream writer, you could write to a file, you could write to a socket, you could write to a UDP socket, you could write to a TCP socket, you could write to an HTTP port, you could write to anything. You could write to the memory, you could write to a string buffer. You could write to the console using console.out which is of type text writer which maps to the standard output device or you could write to any of your own concrete implementation of a text writer which could be a custom data source. And the only property you need to be aware of is the indent property, which is an integer. You can increment the indent to increase indentation. And then the next thing you write will have increased indentation. To decrease indentation, decrease this. And you don't have to keep aware or keep track of this stack. This class keeps track of the stack. And then you just keep appending stuff to this text writer. And it, it will automatically indent it correctly for you. That's basically it. No, wait, just before you leave, I forgot one thing. This is not the only class that provides this service. There is another class called indented writer in the system.xml DLL, in the system.xml serialization namespace that's used for serialization. That also does exactly this, in, that the dotted framework would use to write an XML file. And, and that class looks exactly like this. And there's another class if you go to the XML Writer class. The XML Writer is also used to create XML documents. It has a create method which takes a text writer. And this create method takes settings, some kind of settings object, which has a property called indent, which is a boolean. You can set it to true or false. And if you set it to true, it then has another bunch of classes that it uses to indent the text, which are functionally pretty similar to this one. Have a look at this method. If you want to generate XML, there's a special indentation provider class. There's a class that will provide indentation services for HTML generation and so on. But the trouble is that we could have used these classes, but all of these classes are internal. So we can't use them in our projects. And fortunately, but not accidentally, on purpose, intentionally, Microsoft left this class, the indented text writer, as a public class. And the reason for that is this resides in the system.code DOM namespace, which basically helps you generate source code using code DOM, the code document object model. And since code DOM providers reside in different assemblies, and they would like to reuse this indented text writer, so they had to leave this class public. And the good news that it means for you and me is, we can use this class. <laughs> now, if you're a senior developer, or an architect kind of guy who's been writing code for several years, 
there is nothing else that's going to be new in this video. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to do a demo, small demo. And I think you already understood how to use this. I think you got it in the first 10 seconds. Um, but if you want to stick through the demo, please do. But before I do that, use this code to watch all videos on the Wintelect Now website for free for 14 days. No strings attached. This includes videos from the best of the best, the cream of the crop, from authors like Jeffrey Richter, Jeff Prozeis, John Robbins, Charles Petzold, and other experts. Okay, now let's get on with the demo. Let's assume that we have a class called Organization, and an organization has several employees. And each employee has, I don't know, for the want of a better idea, some things. This just so we could get a hierarchy. And such that if we newed up an organization object, added some employees to the organization, and then called to string on the organization, it returned to us instead of something like that, which is a flat structure, it returned something like this, which is a hierarchical representation with the indentation. Let me walk you through the code I have. I have a class called Thing, which just has a name. I have a class called an employee. An employee has a name and a bunch of things. And we have a class called Organization. An organization is a bunch of employees and does not have a bunch of employees. I've implemented it this way just as a matter of taste because it's a trivial example. You could have implemented it any which ways. If you look at the Organization class, there's nothing special here apart from an iterator implementation, which is apart from implementing i enumerable of t, I have two more methods for adding and removing employees. And I have a class called extensions where I put my extension methods. At the moment I have three extensions. The is null is a convenient syntax I like to use instead of using the equality operator. Is null or empty is again convenient. I just like to call it on the string object itself. And this is a very sweet method I just thought of recently. on. I put an i enumerables and I'd like to find out if the collection, if the i enumerable has something or not, then I just call this. Because it's so much more English like to say, if organization.employees. there are none, then do that. And then in the main function, I new up an organization and add some employees to it. I've currently added three employees, and each of these employees have some stupid things like a blanket or a shawl and shoes and shirts and pants. And obviously, if I ran this code just now, the two string on the organization would simply produce the namespace qualified type name of the organization class. So, in order to print the hierarchy, but without indentation, I'm going to do it without the indentation first, without using the indented text writer, and then I'll do it with using the indented text writer. But in order to represent the hierarchy, I need to override the two string. So that's what I'm going to do right now in all the three classes organization, employee, and thing.
and that prints the entire hierarchy but without indentation. Now let's use the indented text writer to print the same thing but with the proper indentation. For this I'm going to write a new method and I'll still call it toString. So this is going to be an overload for toString. It's just that this one's going to take a text writer and I'll put this method in each of the classes organization, employee and thing and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the writer, if the text writer that's been passed is already an indented text writer then just use that otherwise if it's not an indented text writer if the user wants to write to something else then make that other text writer the underlying text writer for a new indented text writer and then it's just a matter of incrementing or decrementing the indent property on the indented text writer in order to get the indentation right. and we're done. I'm going to comment out the toString method call and this method is going to be called differently because this overload doesn't return anything instead we're going to pass it the text writer that is console.out
and nope there's something wrong something's wrong I haven't let me fix it let me check what's wrong oh I see we're still calling the old two string method we should have been calling our new two string overload in all the three classes we only happen to call the new two string overload in the main function whereas we should have called it at all the places inside of the organization employee and thing class also so I'm gonna go ahead and change that there you are so I hope you learned something new about this little class and how it comes in handy and I hope to bring you more videos soon once again my name is Satyaish Chakravarti I've been writing code for 17 years I live in India if you want help with software design or architecture please get in touch with me via email namaste